Hey, this is Russ. Hey, we're back on the road again. I figured I needed to get out here early because it's going to get warmer later. Current temperature is about 67 degrees. A little chilly right now. But I got my long sleeves on, so that helps. It's going to get into the 80s later. Plus, I am expecting a shipment to show up today. I was actually expecting at least two shipments to show up, but one of them is going to be delayed by about a week. So which one is that? Well, that's the Area 13 uh, Blackbird. Yeah, that was shipped out about a week or so ago. And the estimation of time showed it to be coming in, well, it would have been in two days ago according to its estimation of time. Well, that never made it. So I just waited and I waited and um, yeah, it didn't show up. So I looked again this morning and they pushed it off another week. So I don't know which uh, trucking company this is, but uh, two weeks to come from California, over two weeks. That seems a little long to me. But whatever, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, I know one of you guys don't like that uh, saying. <laughs> but it is. So what's coming in today? Well, the Magic Cycle Cruiser. By the time you see this video, I would have already received it. In fact, I probably would have already put out the uh, review, the initial, not the review, the... Uh, the initial look of the of the bike you know reviews take a little bit of time and um, I know that people have been waiting to see what these new bikes are because it's been announced for so long so I, I didn't want to make Magicycle wait even longer <laughs> for a formal review and nobody gets to see this thing so I figured the best thing to do for these reviews maybe going forward is to do an initial look video first, let you guys see what it is, tell you the basic features of what the bike is. Get that stuff out of the way. I mean, this is stuff that's, uh, you know, stuff that you can probably read just on the, on the website's uh, information, but not everybody reads all that stuff. And um, it'll give you an overview of what the bike is expected to do, and then the actual review will be where I've actually had a chance to play with it a while, get my impressions of it, tell you a little bit about what I thought about it, do a little bit of a ride, check out the range, that type of thing. You know, that takes time to do. So, uh, yeah, why hold them up, right? Why hold them up? Let, let us, uh, let's put that together first and get that information out the door. Now the other bike would be the Mi Bike. The Mi Bike has already arrived. Well, by the time you see this, you've probably even watched that initial <laughs> uh, view of the bike as well. The Mi Bike has already arrived, and um, morning. So I got to do an initial view of that bike too. And the thing is, all these bikes are showing up at the same time. It's, it's just one right after the next. I had to wonder why these bikes are uh, coming out so late in the year. I mean, I, I know in certain areas of the world, you might have a 365-day uh, opportunity to ride your bikes. But here in Chicago, <laughs> we don't get that opportunity. We hit the winter. And although some people ride in the winter, I don't. So, um, you know, coming out late in the season, for, for me, the season would be spring through, um, morning, spring through fall, and um, maybe early part of winter, and, and that's about it. Once the snow hits, that's, that's it. <laughs> so I always wonder why, you know, some products come out during the times that they come out. But, hey, 
I'm lucky to get it. So just yesterday, I happened to be um, looking on YouTube and I noticed that Magicycle was doing a live stream on YouTube. Yeah, so I figured I'd join in. <laughs> now I don't typically join in on these live stream things that YouTube channels do and, and the like, but um, yeah, I figured, hey, why not? <laughs> so I'm watching, uh, watching the Magicycle YouTube channel. And they do have a YouTube channel, by the way. <laughs> if you're a Magicycle fan, you might want to watch that. And maybe you've seen a couple of their videos uh, before. Morning, and uh, so there's this gentleman named Yao, Y A O Yao, kind of like Yao Ming. Remember Yao Ming, basketball player? <laughs> Anyways, I've seen Yao um, on his um, videos before. He was doing the uh, live stream, so uh, yeah, I had to say hello. Now, I didn't know whether Yao knew who I was or not. <laughs> Turns out Yao knows who Russ is right is. <laughs> he watches Russ is right. Yeah, I think uh, I think many of the people at Magic Cycle might know who Russ is right is at this time. Now, Yao is not the person I talk to usually at Magic Cycle. I'm more in touch with another person. I, you know, I never asked what his function is <laughs> at Magicycle. I think he's the marketing guy. I'm not, I'm not really sure. <laughs> but uh, I remember him telling me that um, many of his colleagues at Magicycle are very happy with uh, the performance of sales from Russ is Right. Well, that's not my doing. That's really your doing. You guys like the product you order the product right my job is just to kind of let you know what I've been reviewing and what I'm writing and it, of course many of the times it has been the magic cycle cruiser because that is my preferred bike at this point we'll see if that's superseded by another bike in the future I um, I now really will be riding the Magicycle Cruiser Pro. I call it my semi-pro because it's not the true Cruiser Pro. The motor, the motor is a little different. <laughs> um, but everything else on that bike has been updated, as you know. Morning. So, uh, you know, they got the Ocelot coming out too, and that's, that's, that should be here shortly. But, <laughs> um, so yeah, I went on, I went on the uh, Facebook, Facebook, <laughs> the YouTube <laughs> program that he was doing the live stream. Apparently, they do this live stream twice a month. Here's why I'm thinking maybe you should be watching this. It's because they, they, do, um, they do a giveaway. They did three of them, in fact. The, the giveaways, well, the, they don't give a product away. What they do is they have this thing called magic coins. So they give you credits, right, essentially. And they give you a certain amount of credits, and then as you build up those credits, you can redeem them for accessories or put it as part of your, uh, maybe part of the, the, the sale of your bikes, I don't know. I don't use magic yeah, magic coins. <laughs> well, they put me in the raffle too, and I told them, he says, "Well, take me out of the raffle. You don't need to put me in there. You guys give me enough stuff as it is. You know, I get I get review bikes." So, so anyways, Yao uh, Yao's reading the comments that that go by on the live stream, and he's talking, and he's and he notices, is, and Russ is from Russ is right. Said, Ru "Wait, Russ." <laughs> I thought that was funny. <laughs> yeah, he's never met me. He, he's, he's never talked to me. But yeah, obviously he knew who I was. <laughs> he called me a superstar. <laughs> I thought that was funny. <laughs> well, the thing is, is that uh, a lot of you guys were on there as well. And then I guess you, when you guys saw my name pop up, 
you know, you all started saying hi to me. Well, hello back to you guys. I didn't say hello to everybody, but I knew you were there. I saw you. <laughs> So yeah, it was fun. It was fun hanging out for a couple hours with uh, with the guys at Magicycle Online. So where are we going today? Well, obviously you see we're heading towards the three mile path. I figure I wouldn't go too far out. I need to get back for a shipment. <laughs> That's the Magicycle commuter bike. In fact, uh, the live stream was talking about the commuter bike. Let me, let me say something about the commuter bike, and I didn't even realize this either. The commuter bike comes in three colors. It comes in yellow, kind of like a sky blue type of color. I don't know what they call it. You know, colors have different names, right? They, they all give different names to things. Morning. But they have kind of like a sky blue color bike and then they got black. Well, my, my sample will be coming in in black. I requested the black one. Oh, I gotta, I gotta pedal up this thing. I keep forgetting. This is the, uh, this is the hill that we always have problems with. <laughs> I got distracted by the guy and his dog. So, uh, they had the, uh, they had the black one on with Yao in the beginning and then after the break, they do a break at about the halfway point for about five or ten minutes, he came back with the, uh, with the blue one. I didn't think much about it until I took a look at it closer and I noticed that the blue one is actually like a mid-step. <laughs> the yellow and the black one are high-step models. They never mentioned that on the... Uh, they never mentioned that on the website. So apparently you can get the commuter bike in a mid-step type model. <laughs> I think if I knew that, I may have ordered it that way. Because um, I know my wife would like to ride one. She, she would have liked to have tried it. Anyway, uh, my wife had mentioned to me, she goes, uh, you know, when's your uh, folding bike from Magicycle coming? I said, uh, I think that's the last of the three new bikes to come. It'll probably be end of September. She says, could you ask them to get me one too? <laughs> you know how, this, this is how this whole thing with the ex needle helmet turned about, right? They, uh, she, she said, how come I don't have a good bi uh, helmet? I says, well, they send me the helmets. They don't send you the helmets. They send me the helmets to do the review. <laughs> Well, anyways, I, I reached out to uh, Magis, uh, to Magicycle, to Ex Nido, and asked them if they would send her a helmet to use, and they gave her one. She goes, can you do the same thing for Magicycle and ask them for a Jaguar Rundi folding bike for me? <laughs> I said, I said Not, no, I can't do that. How can I do that? I said, these guys are sending me three new bikes as it is and accessories to go along with it. You know, baskets and cell phone mounts and... <laughs> all sorts of things um, to outfit the bikes. I said, how can I ask them for another bike? She goes, well, you never know. Because um, I remember one channel, I guess, uh, they sent her, sent them, the husband and the wife, a bike. She goes, maybe they'd do it for us. I go, I, I don't know. I said, maybe down the road, maybe I can ask them. I said, if, if there's enough sales that happen because of it, maybe they'll consider doing that. But she says, um, you know, but you know, when we're riding together... When we're riding together, I'm riding a, a rad, and you're riding whatever it is. I mean, I was riding the Engway at the time. So you'll probably be riding the Jaguar Rundi when that comes out. I go, well, that's probably true. Um, she says, wouldn't it be nice if uh, both of us were riding the uh, Jaguar Rundis? I go, well, yeah, but the thing is, you, you don't like being on camera. <laughs> How would anyone know that you're riding a Jaguar Rundi? She goes, well, you can take a shot of it. She has, she has, uh, <laughs> she has excuses and ways of how to, uh, how to make things happen here. So I said, uh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. All right.
I gotta get myself ready for this. All right. All right. So we missed the uh, the tr the, uh, the crosswalk thing. So I think the only time we can go is when when we get a, a green light again, which would be now. Now the guy that crossed over, he was kind of looking at me just because this guy's talking to himself. <laughs> I don't think he knew I was uh, recording. So yeah, anyway, uh, <laughs> maybe one day I can ask Magic Cycle for that favor. We'll see. You know. Now, during the live stream, many of you guys were asking me, when is the Ocelot video coming out? <laughs> I haven't even got an Ocelot yet. Nobody's got one. But they're coming. Yeah, I was saying that a couple weeks after the um, commuter bike comes out, the Ocelot will be coming along with it. Somebody asked on the uh, stream, did you guys ship enough Ocelot Pros to the U.S. for everyone to get one? And he said no. <laughs> but there was a second shipment coming like a week later. So, uh, yeah, I think they underestimated how many they needed to send to the United States because people are pre-ordering these bikes. I mentioned that I thought the Ocelot Pro will do very well for Magicycle. And the reason I think that is because it is a true step-through version and it's got power. <laughs> so you put a combination of powerful bike, true step-through version together, hydraulic brakes and everything, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna do well. So what about the Mi bike? Here's an interesting thing with the Mi bike kind of looks like an Ocelot Pro, but it has suspension in the front and the rear. Is it as good as an Ocelot Pro? Well, we'll see. <laughs> we shall see. Price-wise, um, it's up there. I think, um, I think it's $2,295 for that bike. Ocelot Pro is in the, it's over the 2000 mark. I don't know the exact price and top of my head it's a 2095 I have no idea take a look at the website and uh, so you're talking a bike that's similarly priced within you know 100 200 dollars of each other kind of look the same the only difference is you don't have a rear suspension with the Magicycle whereas you do on the Mi bike does the Mi bike have the same power well the Mi bike claims 85 newton meters of torque And um, the Ocelot Pro claims 95. We'll, we'll see uh, which, which does better. Now you might be wondering why I would accept a bike that's so similar to the other bike. Well, they're not really similar. Um, the Mi bike is a fixed saddle. It's a, it's a fixed seat. You cannot raise it or lower it kind of like a bench seat if you think about it um, if you think about like um, oh um, you think about certain products that have uh, fixed seats what would that be like motorcycles have a fixed seat um, dirt bikes have a fixed seat <laughs> it's kind of like that you, you can't adjust it so being a 20 inch by four inch fat tire bike, it's kind of low to the ground. In fact, um, my first initial ride of it, I couldn't even do a full rotation very easily. I, I have knee problems, obviously. <laughs> I see that guy all the time. <laughs> We say hello to each other all the time. I don't know who he is, <laughs> but he usually waves to me. I usually wave to him or give him the head nod. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, 
Yeah, let's take a left. I know that the sun will be in your eyes here. It'll be right into the camera, so it's not going to be good. This is this is one of the reasons why I don't really like going too early in the morning because I know the angle of the sun is not not that great for you guys. But I, I had to beat the uh, the heat. So. The Mi bike can't be adjusted, and because of that, if you're a tall person or a relatively tall person, you're not going to be able to, to, to pedal that bike. That bike will be essentially a throttle-only bike for, for taller people. Now, for some folks, that's okay. For me, um, I kind of like the option to be able to pedal when I want to pedal, and I, and I need that longer extension of my leg to do it can't do that but I can with the with the Ocelot Pro because that's a standard uh, bike saddle I could raise it and lower it as I need so I think the two bikes are built for different people I mean for those who like that style of bike um, because it, it has uh, has that moped type of look to it if you, if you if you like that type of bike and you're looking for something like that then and here's a here's a bike to consider, right? Now the Ocelot Pro is going to be one to consider for those who uh, who want to ride it like a regular bike. And I'm not saying that you can't ride the Mi bike. If you're if you're a shorter person, you could ride the Mi bike just fine. But I'm thinking um, that bike might be better for someone who's who's a little bit shorter than me. They they recommend at least five feet two inches and higher, and I think they go into the six feet range. I, really, I I don't think so. I think that would be too tough for someone that size to be able to pedal that bike realistically. I mean, I'm five ten and I'm having problems with it. Of course, you may say, well, you've got a knee replacement problem. You can't, you can't bend your knee that much. That's true. <laughs> that is true. Uh, but even so, I'm kind of crunched up in there. I'm not extended the way you should. My bikes usually are all set up for full extension. Not full, but, you know, proper extension as, a, as far as being a bike is concerned. And uh, I prefer it that way. Now, your center of gravity is a little higher when you're like that. Than keeping things low to the ground, um, I can I can straddle, I can stay. Well, there's a deer over there. I can uh, stay seated on the me bike and straddle the bike. I can't do that on this this bike. It's too high up. I prefer that, <laughs> quite frankly. I prefer to be able to uh, have a full extension while I'm riding, and that means I have to hop off the bike. You know, this is why a lot of people don't understand that, you know, if I, if I do full stops, I'd have to hop off the bike constantly, up and down, up and down, up and down, every two blocks. It's a little too much for a bike rider. So, um, so why did I accept the Mi bike? I accepted the Mi bike because I know I can't, I can't be uh, predetermining these bikes just for me. I, I can't be making the decision of not showing you something because maybe it doesn't fit me. It might fit you. And so if I, uh, if I just said, well, I can't ride this bike perfectly, I'm not going to show it. Um, that's not so good either because not all of you are 5 foot 10, right? So maybe this bike would fit Maybe this bike would fit you, you know. Let's say you're a female that's five feet four. Would the me bike fit you? Yeah, absolutely would. Could you pedal it? Absolutely. <laughs> so it's got uh, it's got a torque torque sensor in there instead of a cadence sensor. You can you know it's if you pedal harder, it's going to give you more power. If you pedal less, it's going to give you less. Um, most of the bikes that are, are out there in certain price categories are cadence sensors. A cadence sensor, you know, you could you can ghost pedal and you'll get you, you'll get uh, power going to your your motor, going to your uh, your wheels. 
you don't you don't have to pedal hard and it'll work it this, this type of bike with the torque center sensors it knows you want more power by how hard you're pushing down on the pedal and it'll give it to you and it says hey this guy doesn't want as much he's not pedaling as hard it gives you less so if you're looking for that kind of bike to do that for you the me bike would do it so I don't want to I don't want to eliminate a bike from review based on you know on what I can do and what I can't do um, if the bike has some type of merit I think I'll take I'll accept them and uh, do the review on them even though physically it's tougher for me it might be easier for you see what I'm saying now I said once before that I would not do reviews on bikes that had no no merit at all that's still true <laughs> If I didn't think the Mi Bike had some type of benefit, I wouldn't have even accepted it. It's uh, its unique features happen to be the uh, the front and rear suspension, the, the torque sensor, the hydraulic brakes, the unique look. <laughs> I think its initial drawback would be the fact that uh, I can't adjust the height of the seat. I think if it had seat height adjustment somehow, it would be much uh, much better for me and for people who are, are taller. So, um, <clears throat> so I think it limits its market a little bit based on that. But I think they're going for a different type of uh, person that would be riding that kind of bike. You know, um, the, maybe some of the younger people would uh, be interested in a bike like that. Yeah, you know, the, like the Super 73s, for instance, they have a same similar type of look. Does the Mi Bike fit in with the Super 73 crowd? Looks-wise, it does. Performance-wise, I don't think so. Performance-wise, Super 73s are really fast bikes. That's not the Mi Bike. If you think about it, the Mi Bike is immediately limited to 20 miles per hour. And, I mean, they don't even tell you the unlock code unless you contact them later. So even though the bike can go 28 miles per hour, theoretically, I haven't tried it out yet, um, you don't get to unlock that yourself. You have to tell them you want to unlock it, then they'll send you the code. <laughs> So of course I, I told them, hey, what's the code? <laughs> so yeah, I unlocked mine. I, uh, I moved it to 28 miles per hour. They do this, of course, to, uh, to protect themselves and to protect you too. To, to stay legal in the United States, um, it is set up for a class two um, classification, 20 miles per hour pedal assisted and also throttle assisted. Um, once you unlock it, you get 28 miles per hour, but kind of similarly to the, um, to the Magicycle, you can throttle that to 28. Now, many people have said, well, that's not legally a class three. Technically, they're correct. Class three is pedal assisted to 28 miles per hour the Magicycle, and now also um, the uh, the Mi Bike, as well as the Engway, all three of them could be throttled to 28 miles per hour. So is that legal? I think um, you might say, well, that kind of skirts the uh, the limits of the law. <laughs> They're not unique, believe me. Other bike companies do the same thing. Not all of them, but others do. I know Magicycle, um, not Magicycle, uh, this, this Rad. If you read their websites, they're, they're very firm on how they make their products to make sure that it stays within the law and everything. But if you unlock it, yeah, this this bike will do the same thing. You can you can take this bike up to 25 miles per hour if you unlock it. Yeah, I guess what I did. <laughs> yeah, I, unlo I unlocked mine. And can I throttle it to 25 miles per hour? Yes, I can. 
So they're they're not um, they're not away from it either. They just don't do 28. They do 25. But you can throttle it all the way up to that. So you can't call this class three either. This one kind of falls short of class three because it only does up to 25 when you unlock it. Now this is why a lot of times um, we say that uh, even though Rad claims the 750 watts, it may not necessarily really be the case. It really might be 500 watts, that peak gets 750. That's, that's what I believe it truly is. And a lot of people believe that too. Because otherwise it feels like it's underpowered compared to some of the other bikes. So yeah, I'm still riding the uh, Rad Rover instead of the Magic Cycle Cruiser or even the Mi bike, which has already come in. Um, the cruiser's still down because we're waiting for that star nut that goes inside the, uh, the stem of the fork, front fork. Now one of you guys were kind enough to let me know that there is a tool designed to help align that when you put it into the uh, tube. I ordered that up. I ordered the tool from Park Tool. It was like $25, $26, something like that. And I think they even give you a star nut, one or two star nuts. So um, if that comes in before Magicycles comes in, I may use their star nut to do it. I figured I'd get the tool because um, I think the alignment, putting it in there, because you got to hammer this thing in. Because if you think about it, that nut has to stay in place tightly in order to be safe. I don't think I can do that by hand, so I, I bought the tool to do the, do the job. It may be a one-time only thing, I may never use it again. Um, but I figured it doesn't hurt to have it in case I do have to make changes in the future for other bikes. Um, so that, that bike is still down. Now somebody asked me if I was, uh, I was physically able to ride the commuter bike. Here, here's why that question was asked to me. The Magic Cycle commuter bike is a class one bike. Now I have not seen too many class one bikes. <laughs> so what is class one? Class one means the bike can be pedal assisted to 20 miles per hour and there is no throttle. Now you know how much I rely on my throttle. <laughs> no throttle on this bike. It's also a single speed bike. Single speed. There's no gears on it either. This bike is going to look like a regular bike. I don't think you're going to even be able to tell it's an e-bike. Yeah, I'm not kidding. You're not going to see a big down tube where batteries go in. You're not going to see anything like that. The battery is like 7 amp hours or something like that. It's pretty low. So why? Well, that's because the motor is low. <laughs> I think the motor is, what is it, 250, 350, something like that, watts? It's, it's down there. So why did they do that? Well, when the, uh, when the bike has such a small motor, it really doesn't need that much power to run it. So putting a seven amp hour battery in there, 7, 7.5, something like that, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm just, I'm just thinking these things on the top of my head. Um, that might be the equivalent of putting a 15 amp hour into another bike that has a bigger motor. You see what I'm saying? So because the motor is smaller, <laughs> you don't need as much battery to get the same amount of range. Now, had they put a larger battery in there, that had something like 20 amp hours or something. I mean, we were, let's yeah, let's go all the way up. Let's say it has a 20 amp hour battery on it. What would that do? That would be more range. Okay. The power is still the same in the sense that you know you only have a motor that does say 250 or whatever it happens to be. So now you've got 
all this extra current just sitting around waiting for you to use it. You can get more range out of it. So why didn't they do that? Well, if they did that, then the bike wouldn't look like a regular bike. It would have to be larger to hold all those batteries. Think about what a 20 amp hour battery looks like on a larger bike. The Mi bike, for instance, is 48 volts, 20 amp hours. Look at the down tube on that thing. It's kind of big. That your, your commuter bike would not look like that. I mean, a commuter bike, I think, is like 56, 57 pounds. How would it maintain that if you had a bigger battery? You see what I'm saying? So certain decisions are made on bikes like that to give you the look of a standard bike, the weight of a standard, well, it's, it's heavier than a standard bike, obviously, but lighter in weight than this bike, give you a lighter weight, single speed, doesn't even use a chain, it uses a belt. It's a belt-driven bike. So the benefit of that would be um, it's quieter. You're not gonna hear the chain running around. It's gonna be a quieter bike and it's you know it's not gonna be greasy. <laughs> you don't have to lube it. They say that the belts uh, last longer than the chains. Well, I don't know. I've never worn out a chain, quite frankly. On your left. So, yeah, this this is going to be a challenge of a bike for me. Because now I'm going to have to pedal all the time. <laughs> you, you can't go if you don't pedal, all right? So yeah, so he asked me whether uh, whether I was up for the challenge of the commuter bike. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. You know, I told Magicycle this as well. I said, you know, I don't know about this bike. <laughs> I don't know how well I will do with it. And they said, well, you know, give it your best shot. <laughs> yeah, I will. You know, I'm, I'm bigger. I'm a heavier guy. They know that. What am I weighing now? About 255, something like that. So, so uh, yeah, I'm on the upper ranges of, the, of that bike's limit. Got a knee replacement problem on top of it. And now I have this single speed, <laughs> lower wattage, belt driven, <laughs> commuter bike to test out it's gonna be a challenge I am up for the challenge I'm gonna give it a try will it be a bike that I will ride constantly no <laughs> I already can I can tell you that right now <laughs> no I'm I'm a uh, I'm a cruiser guy I'm a guy that likes the cruiser bike I'll probably like that bike I'll probably like the Ocelot Pro <laughs> those are the bikes that I probably would like the best but, you know, got to try the different products. This is like the Mi Bike. Come on, that's not something I'm going to ride all the time. We already know that. But I don't want to exclude it. Because uh, excluding it because I can't ride it doesn't give you the opportunity to see what's out there. So I took it. I said uh, I, should, I should show this bike for those who might need a bike like that. I can't, I can't prejudge it, right? Give you guys the opportunity to make a chance to decide for yourself if it's a bike for you. I, I really kind of think that the Mi bike would do well for the shorter rider. Yeah. I mean, if you have long legs, you can't adjust the seat height, that's going to be a problem. I mean, I knew that right off the bat. But um, let's say you are 5'2", five 5'4". Could you ride these big bikes? No. <laughs> but you can ride something like the Mi bike, right? So we can't we can't really just um, eliminate that. I mean, I guess you could say, okay, then just just let the shorter uh, YouTubers uh, review the Mi bike. Well, <laughs> I guess you could do that, but how are they gonna know who's a shorter person, who's a taller person to, to send it out to? How are they gonna know that? They they won't. 
I think they're going to look at the popularity of that YouTuber. If they think that that person can do a good job, then they'll send it to that person. So they contacted me and I said, well, <laughs> I don't know if I can ride this bike, but yeah, let's, let's, let's give it a fair shake. They're a new company. Let's, let's give them a fair shake. That's why I accepted it. Now, there's another bike coming. <laughs> another, yet another brand, all right? Yet another brand, still a relatively new brand. Um, what about that bike? What's so special about that? Nothing, <laughs> quite frankly. Nothing stands it out more so than another brand. Yeah, I'm not gonna move. Cars are coming. Gotta make sure the cars are cleared. So why did I accept that brand? I won't tell you the brand until we get it. I debated for a while on that one as well. I kept thinking, should I do a review of this bike? Should I not do a review of this bike? Nothing really stands it out. It's, it's pretty much as good as the next brand. I can't be looking for bikes that are always one up from the other brand and eliminating the others because it's just this similar to other brands. I mean, there's competitive models from different companies, right? If I just said, oh, I just did this one bike, this, this one brand doesn't seem to have as much as that other brand, then you're eliminated from seeing that brand because it just so happened it didn't come through my house. Um, so you don't get to see it. I, I don't think that's the right way either. The, the thing is, is that the brand... All right, I think these, these will finish off. Thank you for that guy, he's letting us through. Um, this brand, um, like I said, it's, it's, the product seems very good. It's just uh, kind of standard like everybody else's product. So uh, should they be eliminated? No, I don't think so. If, if the product is outright has a flaw that I can see, I will eliminate the brand. There's no, no sense doing a review on something you can immediately see as a potential product flaw. This does not have any product flaw. But neither does it have something different, like it doesn't, it doesn't have the uh, front and rear suspension or something, you know. It, it, just, it just is what it is. So yeah, I said, okay. Let's, uh, let's do the review of it based on its own merit. Price-wise, it's a little higher than some other brands too. But I wanted to see, did they, um, did they do anything to justify that additional higher price? I mean, is the, is the build and the construction better, maybe, than another brand? I, I won't know that until I see it, right? So, uh, but as far as does anything stand out that glaringly says there's something wrong with this bike, don't do the review. No, nothing, nothing comes out to me saying that this bike has got a problem. Maybe the only problem is cost just a little bit more, maybe a couple hundred dollars more than another brand that might be similar. But on the other hand, like I said, if it's built better or if there's something that's a little bit that stands it out more that warrants that extra few dollars, then uh, yeah, it might be the bike for you. So I took it in. So that's coming as well. I'm not quite sure exactly when that one will show up. Um, <laughs> it's gonna show up like when all the other bikes show up. All of these things are coming in at the same time. In a sense, it's good that it's coming in now before we run out of uh, riding days because it, it, we will eventually run out of riding days, in which case then even if bikes come out, I cannot do a review until uh, after the winter months. Yeah, I was talking to my wife about this and I said, why are these companies coming out with products so late in the season? And she says, well, you know, there's Christmas. People buy bikes during Christmas time. That's true. <laughs> They buy bikes during Christmas time to, uh, uh, 
Well, let's see which is my best way. I think my best way is this way, but I don't want this person to run into me. If they even see me here or not. Alright, let's do this. That guy can't turn, so I got I gotta make my move. Yeah, she said, you know, people buy bikes during Christmas even though they can't ride it because they're getting it ready for the springtime when they can ride it. That's true. <laughs> Just seems kind of strange, right? I mean, if you wait, if you wait until the season, you might not even get a bike because uh, it might be sold out and everything. All right, I think I can do it. Always got to see what the what the cars are doing before you head on. My balance is getting better, by the way. I, you know, just what I just did there I had to go kind of really slow and turn. I would never been able to do that when I first bought this bike, and I think that's where my wife has got to get to that level. She hasn't been on the bike long enough to be able to do things like what I just did, where I'm kind of teeter-tottering back and forth at a very very slow speed staying balanced on the bike without hopping off it and I think that's why she fell when she did that u-turn that that u-turn is a very very sharp huge u-turn and so she tried to navigate it and then she couldn't do it and she fell I was able to do it at a slow speed even it's just uh, what I'm used to being on the bikes now I, I can balance myself pretty well So, anyway, that's that's what's been going on. There's there's new bikes coming. Uh, the Area 13 bike is delayed a week now. Their estimation got pushed off one whole week. I don't know how they could estimate it and then push it off, being late by two days and then pushing it off one week. On top of that, I mean, did they lose this bike? What's 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 happening? So, <laughs> well, we'll just have to wait it out. Well, I appreciate you guys uh, following along as usual. I just wanted to get outside and get a ride in before I can't do it. Um, now I'm going to head home, sit around and wait for FedEx to drop off the, uh, the Magicycle uh, commuter bike. But they, they slated that for 10.30 to 4 o'clock. You know, they give you such a wide time period. You don't even know when they're going to show up. Let's hope they don't damage this bike. <laughs> They damaged the uh, the Angway. <laughs> that took forever to get it fixed. All right, I'll talk to you guys next time. Hey, hit the like and subscribe too, if you haven't already done so. Talk to you guys next time.